get the matter of introductions out of the way. If you don't Bob Garst and Charlie Thomas, here goes. This is Bob Garst. If you see him again this winter, he won't be wearing a hat then either. And here's Charlie Thomas, whose constant attention to growing and processing seed corn is your crop insurance for next year. The result of this partnership is an institution dedicated to the production of superior seed corn, the largest and most modern plant in existence. More than 100,000 bushels of Pioneer hybrid seed were dried, sorted, graded and bagged here this year. The warehouse, 300 feet long and with a capacity of more than 40,000 bushels, was recently built to accommodate the increasing volume. When I met you a moment ago, I knew you were here to find out the how and why of hybrid corn, and how and why its use will put more money in your pocket. But before we see what has been done with hybrid corn, let's take a look at a field of open pollinated corn. I think you'll recognize it. Maybe we can refresh your memory about the faults and the flaws of open pollinated corn. Anywhere in the corn belt, fields of open pollinated corn greet the eye. This one isn't a bad field either. In fact, it's pretty good, but it won't bear close inspection. Garst and Thomas have thousands of visitors every fall who insist upon seeing the difference between open pollinated corn and pioneer hybrid corn. No worse than the average field. Yet there's a decided lack of stiffness here, which is notably present in the hybrid fields you're to visit later. You will observe a general lack of stiffness and style. Looks like the cows had been in the corn. There's an appearance of shagginess, due mostly to fallen stalks. Stalks that break before the ears mature cause chaffy and rotten ears, not sound corn and not conducive to large yields. The stalks upon which these ears were produced went down early with resultant rottenness of the ear. Limber stalks are easily blown down and are difficult to pick either by hand or by machine. When the wind is accompanied by rain, the fallen stalk attempts to come up again and in so doing forms a gooseneck. Another reason for stalks falling is a poor, weak root system, a typical fault of open pollinated corn. Later, you will contrast this root with the heavy pioneer hybrid root. The lack of uniformity in height of ears of open pollinated corn slows down picking materially. For this reason, corn picking contests are practically always held in hybrid fields, where the contestants show to the greatest advantage. The uneven position of ears seen here does not permit rapid or efficient husking. Another fault of open pollinated corn is the fact that the ears themselves drop off so easily on windy days. A mechanical corn picker can't pick up these ears. A human corn picker doesn't like to. After the corn picker has been through the open pollinated field, the job of picking up fallen ears yet remains. This extra task is wholly unnecessary in the pioneer hybrid fields, which you'll soon see. 10% of the corn was left on the ground. Too much to leave, but a lot of work to get. And here's what you finally do get. Ununiform size, shape, and quality. The reason for the lack of uniformity and vigor in the field that we've just looked at is that you don't know which pollen grain pollinated each separate kernel. In other words, you don't know who the daddy was. No one would be so foolish as to try to improve livestock without selecting the finest sire. The reason you get a prize-winning bull or a good boar is because some breeder has selected his grandparents with the greatest of care. Now let's take a look at a field of pioneer hybrid corn where we too know the father and the grandfather. In fact, we know all of the ancestry for ten generations back.
the crowd gets larger. You know what they say about building a better mousetrap. This is daily routine during harvest time at the Garston Thomas plant in Coon Rapids, where visitors are welcome. Seeing is believing. Here's an example of what Pioneer Hybrid Seed Corn will do for you. There's an ear on every stalk. The ears are at a uniform height and the stalks are standing up stiff, straight and strong. And the ears will bear plenty of inspection too. Again, the uniformity of height is extremely noticeable. The product of two adjacent hills re-emphasizes the uniformity of the ears for size, type and quality. They're a noonday meal for any horse. Pioneer produces corn of real quality. It's good feed and it markets at top prices. For those of you who have marveled at 100 bushels per acre yields, you're now seeing 110 bushels to the acre. What do you think of this neighborhood of healthy ears called the Gold Coast by one visitor? 110 bushels to the acre means 8,800 pounds of ear corn. It takes sturdy stalks to hold up this kind of a crop. How beautifully they stand. We can even see angle-wise or cross-wise through the cornfield. Take a look down that aisle, a pathway to prosperity. And what's more, the ears don't fall off when the wind blows. Remember how easily they fell in the other field? Smoke that one in your pipe, mister. Corn can't stand up without a root system either. Go ahead, pull it out. It can be done, but it takes plenty of heft. These roots go down where the plant food and moisture are. They ought to produce corn. They've had plenty of opportunity to absorb a lot of nourishment from the soil, and they did produce a lot of corn. Roots tell a lot of the story of pioneer hybrid corn. Which one of these two roots do you think has the best chance to get down where the moisture and plant food are? Which one will hold the stalk the straightest? A Pioneer hybrid root is four times as large. The mechanical corn picker also gets a real chance to do a good job in hybrid corn. Sooner or later, all farmers will be using the corn picker. The heavy root system, sturdy straight stalks, and strong shanks of Pioneer hybrids are well adapted to mechanical corn picking. This is corn raising reduced to a science. In a few minutes, that wagon will be back full of corn from four rows, 70 rods long. When picking corn by hand or mechanically, how convenient it is to find the ear at a uniform height on every stalk. There aren't two inches difference in the height of ears. Just to show that these individual hills aren't unusual for this pioneer field, let's pick three consecutive hills. How uniform they are in height. How nicely they break out. And what fun to pick these golden ears. And man, what a profit. Three adjacent hills, nine big, fine quality ears, harder to hold than to husk. Over here, the corn pickers already made one round, 70 rods long, and here's the take. Hold on there, old boy. Oh, but then we can't blame you at that. They'd never believe you back home if you didn't have some corn to back it up. And over in the corner of the field, the loaded wagons are dumped. The corn elevated onto waiting trucks and headed for the processing plant. In one day, three men with a corn picker have picked 2,000 bushels from 19 acres of land and loaded it onto the trucks. Again, we repeat, Corn raising reduced to a science. And so to town it goes, and while we string along behind, let's glance at the field that was picked with the sturdy straight pollen rows left standing. The corn from these pollen rows is never used for seed, but is later picked and fed. 